This is part 101 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the use of async and await keywords with an example. So here is what we want to do. We have a notepad here which has some data. Let us create a simple Windows Forms application that counts the number of characters that we have in this notepad. Let us assume the file is very big and it takes around 5 seconds to read and count the number of characters in the file. When the process file button is clicked, we want the application to display processing file please wait message so the user knows the application is busy processing the file. As soon as the application finishes processing the file, it should display the number of characters as you can see here. Another important requirement is that the application should remain responsive throughout the entire process. That is, when the application is busy processing the file, the application should not hang and we should still be able to interact with the application. We should be able to click within the other controls on the form, move the form around on the screen, resize it if required, etc. First, let's create the application without using the async and await keywords and see how it behaves. What I have done so far is created this notepad with name data.txt. Within this notepad, we have got some text. We want to read the number of characters that we have here. This data.txt notepad is present in the data folder, which in turn is present in C drive. I've also created a new Windows Forms application. To create a new Windows Forms application, click on File, New, Project, and within the New Project dialog box, select Visual C Sharp, and you'll see Windows Forms application. I have named this Windows Forms application Async Example, and on this Windows Form, I have a button, and I have set a few properties on this button. First of all, I have set the name of the button to btn process file and the font size to 10 and then finally the text on the button to process file. On this form we also have a label and here is that label. For the label I have set name to LBL count. This is the label which will be displaying this message processing file please wait and then once it has finished processing the file the number of characters that we have in the file. So I have set the name of the label to LBL count and again font size to 10 and finally text to an empty string. And for the form itself, I have set text property to count characters in a file. Now let's go ahead and generate click event handler for the button. So select the button and then within the properties window, click on the events icon and then click on the click event here which is going to generate the click event handler method now let's right click on the form and view code so here we have the click event handler so the first thing that we want to do here is create a method which is going to process the file and count the number of characters within our notepad so this is going to be a private method it's going to return us an integer that is the number of characters that we have in the file and let's name the method count characters. This method is not going to take any parameters. The first thing that we are going to do here is create a variable count and initialize it to 0. The next thing that we want to do is create an instance of stream reader which is going to read the file from the disk and the stream reader class is present in system.io namespace. So let's bring that namespace in and now let's create an instance of stream reader. Let's call it reader equals new stream reader and we want the stream reader to be pointing to our notepad so let's specify the path for our notepad. Our notepad is present in C drive within data folder and the name of the notepad is data.txt and then now let's create a string variable let's call it content equals reader dot read to end so this method is going to read all the contents of the notepad and we are going to store that content in this variable and to get the number of characters all we have to do is on the string variable use the length property which is going to give us the number of characters and let's store that within our count variable 
Now our notepad is not that big, so this application is going to take a few milliseconds to process that. To make the application look busy for five seconds, let's make the thread that is processing to sleep for five seconds. So first, let's bring in system dot threading namespace. And then let's make the current thread sleep for 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. And then finally, let's return whatever we have in our count variable. So this is uh, the private method which is going to count the number of characters that we have in our notepad. Now we want to call this method within our click event handler. So here, let's create a variable. I'm going to call it count. Let's initialize that to zero. And the first thing that we want to do here is within our label, let's display the text which says processing file, please wait. And then you know, let's call our count characters function, which is going to process the file. And remember, this is going to be busy for at least five seconds. And then as soon as it finishes executing this method, within this variable, we will have the number of characters that we have in the notepad, which we want to display in the label. So lbl count.txt equals count dot to string and to this let's append characters in file. All right, so let's go ahead and run our application by pressing Control F5. We have our application running here. When we click this process file button, we are going to have two problems. First of all, it will not display the status message processing file please wait, and the application also becomes unresponsive while it's busy processing the file. We'll not be able to move the Windows form around like this, and we also will not be able to resize the form while it is busy processing the file. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's click the process file button. Notice we don't see the status message. I'm not able to move it around, and I'm not able to resize it as well. Once it has finished processing, now I'm able to move it around and we can resize it as well. And now we see the number of characters that we have in the file. And here is that blocking example code that we just discussed. Now let's see how to make this Windows Forms application responsive by using the async and await keywords. The only method that needs to change is this BDN process file click method. Let's make this method async by using the keyword async. So basically this is telling we can call this method asynchronously. And then within the method we are going to create a task. You can think of task as a unit of work to do. This task class is present in a different namespace and that is system.threading.task. So make sure you have that using declaration. Now, we are going to use this task to call this count characters method. This is a method which is going to take a bit of time to execute, so we are offloading that responsibility to this task. Now, since this count characters is returning an integer, we are actually going to create task of integer. Let's call the instance task equals new task. And we want this task to execute this count characters method. So let's pass the name of the method here. And then let's start the task. So this task now is going to execute this count characters function. And while the task is busy executing the count characters function, the UI is free and the user will be able to interact with the form. You know, the form will no longer be blocking. We'll look at that in action in just a bit. So we have our task, which is executing our long running job here, which is count characters. And then another change that we need to do is right here. So when the application has reached this point, you know, we have to wait for this task to complete, right? So to signal that, we are going to use 
await keyword and we are going to await on the task. So right here, the application will wait for the task to complete processing count characters and then return. And at that point, we'll have the number of characters in the notepad, which the UI will then display in the label. So three simple steps here to use our async and await keywords and make this application responsive. Let's go ahead and run our application by pressing Control F5. We have our application running and when we click this process file button, notice the status message processing file please wait is immediately displayed and the application is also responsive. Look at this, when the application is busy processing the file, I can move it around and I can also resize it. So here we have a non-blocking responsive application. We have our non-blocking example code that we just discussed right here. So what is the use of async and await keywords in C-sharp? Async and await keywords are used to create asynchronous methods. The async keyword specifies that a method is an asynchronous method and the await keyword specifies a suspension point. The await operator signals that the async method can't continue past that point until the awaited process is complete. In the meantime, control returns to the caller of the async method. An async method typically contains one or more occurrences of an await operator, but the absence of await expression doesn't cause a compiler error. If you have any experience writing multi-threaded programs, then you might get a few questions at this point. Can we achieve this using threads? What is the difference between a thread and a task? And when to use one over the other? We'll answer all these questions in our next video. Thank you for listening and have a great day.